All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us, John Jay. Uh, today is March 28th, and we're going to talk about how to make a little more money every month. Um, I know I always talk about structuring uh, things to use money, you know, the way to protect it, uh, avoid tax liability and things like that. And I'm going to talk about tonight how to, what things to consider in trying to create a situation where you can actually create some more cash flow without getting a second job and also do it in a way that doesn't create a tax liability. Why not, right? While we're at it, we already know how to do that. While we're at it, let's just do that. So generally what I end up coaching people on, and you'll see in the uh, aceofcoins.club website, okay, there's different subscriptions. And one of them is about business and entrepreneurship. So if you go to aceofcoins.club, you'll see there's different uh, courses there. But this one, uh, you'll see in the business and entrepreneurship, I talk about these strategies. And I'm going to mention this tonight, but I'm also going to introduce you to something that I was just introduced to yesterday that I think you would really find appealing and it would meet all the criteria that I'm going to talk about. So what I, what I typically tell people is that if you want to create some income, income for yourself without getting a second job, and maybe it takes a little bit of your attention, that's fine. Um, find a website. Okay. A website doesn't get your hands dirty so much. And uh, yeah, of course there's always risk and there should be risk because with risk, you can make money. And why not do something that other people are already doing? Don't reinvent the wheel. Do the, do the same thing everyone else is doing. So start with thinking like this. Every month I buy products. And a lot of times I might buy products from Amazon. I might buy products from Shopify or one of these types of websites, okay? I might go on the internet and buy some products. What kind of products am I buying? I don't know. What kind of products are most people buying? If they buy things on the internet, they're buying things they're going to be using, right? And they're going to use them again and again, like shampoo, right? So what I tell people is, why don't you find something that's being sold on the internet already and find a website that's selling it and make it a product, find a product that is <clears throat> going to be sold and bought most of the time, even in bad economic times, right? Good economic times, bad economic times. I call these vanity products, things that people don't need. They're going to have them because they have comfort that they, they provides them comfort or some something like that. And here's an example of that would be uh, pet supplies, not just supplies, but I mean pet toys. Who needs that? <laughs> but people will buy it because they love their doggy and they want to they want to have that right. They're going to buy it in almost any economic situation. What about uh, exercise equipment? People are going to buy that. Uh, exercise attire. Yoga pants. That's the example I always give. Exercise gear, equipment. People will buy those things. They have they perceive value. For example, they're gonna they're gonna want to get in shape in any economic situation. So I like to I like to have low risk, but I also I want risk that I can manage. Put it that way. So to answer the question of how do I supplement my income or how do I offset a liability I have that I cannot avoid? For example, a mortgage payment or a rental payment. You can't avoid that one. You always have a cost of living, right? But what you can do is offset that normal living expense with selling products that people are always going to buy. You're buying them. What are you buying? Sell them to somebody else. The thing you're not doing is you're not selling the thing that you're buying. And somebody else is. Why aren't you? Nothing's stopping you, right? That's one of the more important things. So figure out what that is. It doesn't have to appeal to you. Maybe you don't like the product, but you know it's being sold, right? Become a consumer, go shop for the thing and think to yourself, gosh, can I sell this thing? Who's selling it? Who's got a website that's selling something like this? Or who's got a website that's selling stuff that I can replace with the stuff I want to sell? Start thinking like that, right? So what I, what, what I typically tell people is buy a, a website that's selling a vanity product. And usually the asking price the criteria for this is the asking price for a beginner, someone who's never done this before. The asking price should be within six months of the net income of the business. Eh, let's say a year. Okay. A year means more risk, right? So let's say uh, it's netting you $2,000 a month and it's going to cost you, uh, let's say the seller wants $8,000, right? So it's going to take four months of net income to pay it off. Why do I say it like that? Well, that's a pretty manageable debt. It's not really a debt because you're investing in an asset. You're investing in some way to produce money without working for that money, okay? But why would I want something that is going to net me $2,000 a month and it's going to cost me $8,000?
because when I make the offer to the seller, maybe he's going to be willing to finance it to me. Okay. You think, well, who cares about financing $8,000? I do. If I had $8,000 in my pocket, I'm still going to borrow it from you. Okay. Because that's what you do. It's just what you do. Why not always offset your risk every moment you get a chance, right? So it gives me a good opportunity to go to the seller and say, hey, I, I like it. And yeah, you only want $8,000. And I know I'm speaking hypothetically here, but you want $8,000. Can you finance it to me? If the seller says no or hesitates, I'm going to ask them, well, why? Why would you not finance it to me? It's such a low risk. And I don't know you. And you get your money. It's it's only $8,000. And if the numbers are really what you say they are, then why would you have a problem financing it to me? You see, it gives you a little bit, in my opinion, it gives you something to talk about for negotiating for financing. You always go to the seller for financing first. That's what you should always do. I don't care if you're a millionaire. Always go to the seller for financing. You can always refinance out, by the way. But to start out with, especially if you're new, get something like that. What do I really want? Everybody's going to say, I want to sell a thing to everybody on earth and I want to be a millionaire. Okay. That sounds really nice, but let's just be practical here for, all right. You got a job. You learned how to do that. You learned how to do a lot of basic things to make you where you are economically. So let's just do something a little bit different. Let's try to create some cash flow without having to work for it. You are going to work for it, but it's not going to be an hourly type uh, activity, vocation. So why am I doing it? Let's have a purpose. Not because John Jay said so, it's a great idea, but what you wanna do is maybe offset your mortgage payment. Can you imagine making your mortgage payment because the website over here is working and you check in every day with your phone and make sure the shopping cart's working, make sure the website's still loading, make sure there's no broken links, uh, see if there's any problems with refunds. Oh, and by the way, you don't have inventory because we set this up to where someone else is shipping the inventory and, and restocking. But you got to make sure that you're doing that right. So basically, you can run the thing with your phone after you get going for a while. And this is what I told my children. I said, forget going to college. There is no college unless you want to go to a technical, you know, a technical university or go to, a, you know, a foreign university that's actually still a university. Don't do that. Instead, set up a website. This is what I told my children starting 10 years ago. Make money as an entrepreneur. Use a website. You can use technology to make money and then travel around the world. So have that pay your way to travel around the world and work for people. Sometimes you can work for people for free so you can learn. That is, I think, the best way to learn. And this is what I told them. So they're kind of doing that now. They're a little afraid, but they're kind of look, they're in that position to do that. And I'm suggesting to my clients do that. When someone comes to me with student loan debt and he's 25 years old or something like that, I'm going to show him how to set up a website to make money to offset the debt payments for the student loan and pay it off paid off with an asset. If you come to me with a student loan at age 55, I'm going to wonder why you have a student loan at 55, you know, uh, but I'm going to probably make it to where you're uncollectible. I'm not going to try to show you how to pay it off, right? It just depends on your age, depends on that. So this is a tool that you can use to offset a typical liability, a mortgage payment. We're all really good about doing the thing our neighbor did. You own a house, your neighbor figured out how to own a house. He went to the bank. He figured out how to qualify for a mortgage. So did you. But did you acquire an asset before you acquired the liability of a house? Did you go and buy a house and start renting it to somebody else and then take that income and use it to go buy a house to live in? No, you went and bought a house to live in first. You bought the liability first. You learned how to do that first. I don't know. Maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. I'm just thinking if you want to be ahead of the rest of the pack, let's say, if you want to be ahead of most other people, if you've already figured out how to buy a house and go into this huge debt to incur this huge financial liability, why not make those payments, those monthly payments from something you can you can buy for like $8,000? Maybe it's going to cost you $20,000. Okay, fine, fine. Maybe it's going to cost you $30,000 and maybe to get the $30,000, you have to use your credit card and you're going to use your credit card not to buy the business, but you're going to use your credit card to offset another liability you have all the time and then take the cash you would have normally used to make those payments and use it to buy the asset. There's all kinds of ways to do this. Okay. So this is what I normally tell people. That's the criteria. Find something that with the net income, it's going to take six months around six months 
to pay it off if you were to get financing. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. You could take three years. You know, it depends on what you have a stomach for. Because, you know, you could set up a deal and maybe you're going to lose sleep every night. <laughs> you don't want to be in that situation either. Pick something you can handle. And I always give the example. This is a very unusual example. But I, I like to do. I like to give this example because of what I want you to think what can be possible. When you ask me about helping you in these situations, when I'm speaking generally to everyone, I'm going to talk about something that's under $20,000. So about four years ago, three years ago, one of my clients was doing that. This gentleman was about 20, 26 years old. And so we had the same conversation. Here's what you do. One, two, three. Well, he went and did that. Okay. And it didn't work. He made an offer. Like I told him, he did exactly what I told him and it didn't work. And before he even got to the point of making an offer on the first website business, uh, he went through probably 20 to get to that one offer and he made the offer and somehow it didn't go through. I don't know what it was. I forget. Maybe the, maybe the, he couldn't r reach a deal with the seller. I don't know what it was, uh, but he, but he didn't tell me this as he was doing it. Cause, cause he told me afterwards when he finally succeeded, it took him six months when he finally succeeded. He said, you know, I was going to call you when I first, when it didn't work the first time, but he said, I knew that you would tell me to go look for another one. And so I didn't bother calling you. So, and he, and he was right. I would have told him, I said, look, man, don't call me, go get another deal. That's how it works. You know, uh, what am I going to do? Right. So he did, he went to find another deal and he found another deal after, uh, you know, looking for it and that failed. He made an offer and it didn't work. So again, he didn't call me, thankfully, you know, not that I, I don't mind talking to him, but still, what am I going to tell him? Go get another deal. So he did. He went and found another deal. Now, this one wasn't a $20,000 deal. It just turned out it was $200,000 asking price. And because he was working with a broker, the broker, and this is what I had him do. This is why it's useful to work with professionals that have resources and contacts, okay? It's not just because he's the professional. It's because he, you don't have to reinvent the wheel with a broker in this case. He already knows who to, who to go to and what to say, right? So the broker hooked him up with a, a lender. And this guy had good credit. Now, I'm not saying you need good credit to do this. It just worked out great for him. So he was able to finance. He did exactly what I told him. He asked the seller to finance it. The seller was a corporation. The seller said, yeah, it was it was a few people that were right. It was a small corporation. They financed 40% of this $200,000. He went to the lender and the lender said, we'll finance the other 60%. He bought himself a website business. It was a tech type business for $200,000. He paid the asking price. He got 100% financing and the net income on it was $13,000 a month. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to walk into that deal. This guy just happened to walk into that deal. Was it more difficult than a, an $8,000 website? No, it wasn't. And I asked him after it was all done. In fact, I have an interview on this. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but I asked him, what was, the, what was the effort if you compare getting a mortgage to doing what you just did, buying a business that's netting you $13,000 a month? What effort did you, did you undertake compared with a mortgage? And he thought about it for about you know, a few seconds and he goes, yeah, it's about the same effort paperwork and everything. It was about the same. It took me about six weeks to complete. So why the heck aren't you doing it? Right? So with that being said, I'm going to introduce you to something that one of my clients was very kind enough to and generous enough to introduce me to. And I think I'm going to do it. Um, and this is kind of a side thing for me. Look, I'm always going to do a side hustle. I'm not going to turn down free money. <laughs> you know, I was in cryptos. I look at it like gambling. And I have to say, I'll put some cash into cryptos. I made some money in it and I'm out. I don't even like doing stuff like that, but you can't say no to that type of speculation. But in any case, here's the deal. A few years ago, and I had my wife do this because again, I like to stay focused on my profession, but I can't turn things down. So I had my wife run this Amazon type business. She has eBay and stuff like that. And so after, after a time, Amazon appeared to be just penalizing people that were the small sellers, which included my wife. And uh, so I said, well, just close the account. Why, why struggle with it? You're not a big buyer. You're not buying a half million dollars of inventory. The other guys are. Why are you competing with them? You can't do it. So she closed it down. Well, just the other day, the, uh, my client came to me and said, look, there's a, there's a company that's allowing you to come in there with $10,000 or $5,000 to come in there and buy inventory at the same rate that the big companies are buying at $500,000 a month. You can get the same rate. That allows you to compete with them. Moreover, this company is actually managing the website for you. And I'm not talking about vanity products. I'm talking about anything you want to sell on Amazon, right? So wouldn't you like to get a piece of the income stream from Amazon? Just get a little fraction of it, right? 
all you need is a website and you need the, the algorithms and what Amazon is doing, you get access to the trade secrets that Amazon has. You're not going to get the trade secret, but you're going to get the buying power from this group and you're going to get the strategies that Amazon has because Amazon wants you to sell stuff. And yeah, there is competition out there, but they, they make it in a way to where you're not competing on price. So the way this works is, and I'm here's, here's what I'm inviting you to do. If you want to do this, I don't want to talk to people that just want to talk to me about, they're not serious. You need to have the ability to put up $5,000. This is for three years worth of service. They're going to do it for you. And the ability to buy inventory. I would suggest that you have another $5,000 for purchasing inventory. Maybe you can put that on your credit card. I don't know. But let's just say you got $10,000 to spend. You can take that five. When the, the first five is cost. The next five is inventory. The website's turnkey. They run it for you. They help you buy the right products. They put them, they ship them. It's all done. It's, it's, it's a turnkey operation. Um, and you just roll that money back over and get more inventory. I'm not... I'm not saying this is going to be, you know, guaranteed results, but what I can tell you is that my client is showing me his numbers and in the last 3 months he's made a return on his investment of close to 40% give either way of 40%. It's anywhere from 26% to 43%, somewhere in that range. That doesn't mean everybody does that and and he said it's just you got to pay a little attention to it is, is all that you have to do, right? So uh I'm offering this to people with what I just said about the ability and the the method, the strategy of getting a website that makes money. Now, it doesn't have to be a website. You guys can go out and do a joint venture with somebody and make money. I'm not talking about that tonight. I'm not talking about buying a 7-Eleven. I'm just talking about setting up a way to sell consumer products that's already they're already being sold. The, the only thing is you're missing from that equation. You're not the one selling it. I'm saying to you, Go sell those things that you're already buying anyways, consumer goods. There's already a turnkey system through an Amazon affiliate that set up a platform that gives you access to the same ability as a, as a larger business that is spending $500,000 a month on inventory. You only got to spend $5,000 to start out with, okay? So this gentleman that introduced this to me, he said he's so far invested and reinvested a total of $42,000 in just a few months. And he's up where he's in there like around 40% return on investment, 38%, something like that return on his investment. He goes, I don't even want to take profits yet. He goes, I'm not going to take profits until I have a rolling net worth and his net worth might be a rolling inventory, let's just say. And maybe it's going to be, maybe it's going to be $150,000 worth of inventory and he's going to net himself 20 to $30,000 a month. What the heck can you do with that money, right? You can you can really go out and buy that 7-Eleven, right? You can take that cash and you can you can use that cash as leverage to get financing to do something else. You can also do something like this. Let's say you set up this business, right? And use my strategies on the LLC. You make that LLC the owner of the business, the payment processor, and you start making this money, right? Now you've got yourself a balance sheet with cash flow and a net worth. And let's say you did that today. Let's say you got it going and into the summer, you're, you're starting to make money and it's not going to take that long, but let's just say into June, right? So let's say by the fall, you, you've got this money rolling along and you've got this cash flow, right? And let's say, I don't even know what, what we're talking about. Let's just say we're talking about a value of, let's say $20,000, okay? What could you do with a business that's worth on its face $20,000? You can get all kinds of financing, right? You could. And what else could you do with that? I don't know. You could buy another business, right? You don't even have to be super successful to, to make this into something. It doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire or something like that. So I just wanted to share that with you. So what I would ask is if you want to look at this with me, I will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. I will introduce you to my partners and we'll get you enrolled in this. You need to be able to set up a set aside about 10 grand. I'm not going to waste my time if you're not going to do that, but I definitely want to help you. And my interest is I want bragging rights. I want to say that we, I coached you and you did this. Okay. So what I would ask you to do is send me a message on telegram. Okay. Use at JJ Singleton. You guys know how to reach me and just say, yeah, I want to do it. I need your contact information, name, email, phone. Right. And then I'm going to make a list and then I'm going to send you a, a note out and we're going to schedule a time. We're going to get together and we're going to do a call like this. Just us. Okay. Not anybody else. It's only the serious people that have the ability and willingness to do this. Okay. So I just wanted to offer that to you. And uh, at this point I wanted to, um,
uh, take some questions. If you guys want to talk about this subject, if I talk too fast and maybe you glanced over something, let's, let's cover that. If you want to ask me something that's not on this subject, that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, but I'll open that up for, uh, for that right now. Yeah, it's work. I mean, it's kind of technical. You gotta, you gotta deal with the, uh, you know, inner uh, website, right? Uh, Zoom, what did you want to ask? Hey, um, I just wanted to, does it have to be, um, do you, do you guys take Hawaiian money when you guys do that process, go through the process like that, or do from you have to I have a credit card money? From what I understand, any, any Hawaiian money, Federal Reserve notes, credit card money is, is going to be good. Probably okay. bubble money is not, probably bubble money or shells or salt is not going to be good enough. You need dollars. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. And, and, there's, <laughs> and there's a way to move that money like that, just like that. So just well, send you're it gonna, in. You're going to pay a cost up front, five, 5000 That's good right. for three right. years. And then it's a matter of what you want to put in for inventory. I would Got suggest it. that it's worth your time to come up with five grand worth of inventory. Why do why put a hundred dollars? You're just wasting your time. Put in five right. grand. If you have to borrow from your uncle Bob, please do. You know, it's a great yeah. tutorial. I mean, gosh, if you guys, it's just a great tutorial. Anybody should do this, even if you're in college. So, mm -hmm. okay, so, cool. So yeah, for the five grand, they're going to run your site. Okay. They're going to do the marketing. They're going to tell you what products are selling. They're going to answer questions about positioning, merchandising, all the, they're going to do this turnkey operation. Okay. You're paying for that service. If you try to reinvent this and do it yourself, you're going to spend five grand in the first week. <laughs> These right. guys are yep. charging you five grand for, for three years, 36 months. So yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be like these other guys. I'm not trying, you know me. I'm just, I'd love to be your advocate and show you guys how to make your life better with doing something that's right at your fingertips. We're using technology all day to become slaves. Let's use it mm -hmm. to make some money. Do some good in your life. Yeah. Yeah, you're not, you don't have to put stuff in your garage to sell. <laughs> it's a turnkey operation. I was, I was up the other night. I was up at like, I don't know. I get up, sometimes I get up really early, like at 3.30, okay? And I, sometimes if I'm not tired, I think, ah, oh, 3.30, okay. And I start working. <laughs> if some of you guys see a text from me at four in the morning, you know, it's one of those days, right? Ray's probably like mm -hmm. that too. But anyways, I'm up at, I'm looking out my terrace and I'm seeing um, a person delivering packages in his car. And I noticed he had an Amazon shirt on. And I'm thinking, man, they got a heck of an operation going there. This is at five o'clock in the morning and he's delivering packages and it's some guy. He just works for Amazon. He doesn't even have a big truck. So interesting, interesting times. Amazon's the future, guys. I hate them, but they're the future. Can't argue with it. Zoom, did you want to ask anything else? Yeah. I had, oh, yeah, go ahead. I had a, no, I'm, I'm right here. I had two yeah. questions. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I was kind of looking into just buying other businesses and stuff like grooming, pet grooming locations yeah. and stuff like that and having somebody else run it. Do you think seller finance is kind of the best way to go about that if you don't have friends who have money? Well, I would start there. I don't care if I have friends with money. If I don't care if I have cash, I always ask the seller to finance at least some of it. It's just pragmatic. Okay. Why not? I mean, yeah. he, you're asking him to bet on something. You're asking him to bet on something. He's already, apparently he's selling you, right? He's selling you. So why not ask him to put his money where his mouth is? I don't use those words with him, but I, you know, hey, if it's good, if it's so good, why, why don't you finance it to me or finance part of it? Because if you can finance, here's what I tell him. If you can finance part of it to me, it'd be easier for me to get financing from whatever. Sure. <laughs> I mean, that's a good reason, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then two, you know, with the pass through the LLC PMA, I know you've told me a hundred times, so I apologize for asking again, but I just want to make sure. So if somebody you're doing business with through that pass through is like, hey, we want to file W-9, that we would get a 1099, but that doesn't create a tax liability for us. So what's the point of it, right? It doesn't yeah, the create person, a tax liability. The person that you're dealing with is not filing a W-9. He might be issuing a 1099 if your company is going to earn money with that other company. So what I they'll suggest be paying is, us. They'll exactly, be paying so us. that company will be sending you a 1099. What I suggest is you give that company a W-9, which is a certification of the correctness of the EIN. That's all it is. Oh. Yeah. You want it, you want it. So what you're doing is you're passing off the liability to report it correctly. So the company that's going to pay you money is going to give you a 1099. You want to make sure that on the 1099, your company is the receiving party. That's right, the, the EIN. Right, and the correct EIN because sometimes you'd be surprised. 
somehow they get your SSN and they use that on the 1099 and you got big problems then. Because now you got oh. the SSN with the company. That's why I tell you, you use the W9 and that passes off the liability on them. They have to correct it then. Okay. Right? But then so, of course- so you're, you're giving the, the W9, not them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there's, there's no tax liability from that. Yeah. So how, what would be the scenario when we like would file a 1099? Well, if you're going to pay somebody else. But if your company's not filing a tax return, then you should not be issuing a 1099. Okay. Just just very importantly, don't don't forget that. If your company is not filing a tax return, it should not be issuing a 1099 because that has the same consequence as filing a tax return. Right. So are there any documents? So the only document that you that like we would fill out is a W9. Right. To them. We give you them give a W9. You give a W9 to the payor. But no, nothing else then? No. Okay. Yeah, that's so simple. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, I ask you all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is. I mean, really it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't like the idea that I have to change the oil in my car, and I don't, never have. But if someone were to tell me, yeah, it's so simple, John, I'd say, oh, no, it's not. Oh, I'll, no, I'll it's break not. my car. I'll break my car. But if I did it once, you know, maybe I'll make a mistake or something, but I'm sure I'll recover. But I have to just try and do it. And that's the thing. You can't break anything. You're not going to hurt anything. What's happening though is it's costing you money the longer you're waiting to do something like this. Yeah. To create some, to, I mean, you're buying consumer products all the time. Imagine if you could sell shampoo to everybody in your neighborhood. You could do that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, they're still going to buy it. They don't care who's selling it. Yeah. Fair point. All right. Okay, thank you. All right. I appreciate it. All right. All right. So anyways, I hope there's some of you out there, this is going to help. Uh, I would love to talk. I'm hoping I get a group of like a dozen people because uh, uh, it's just it's just fun. It's a heck of a lot of fun. I mean, you, you should be on some of the conversations I have with partners. I call them up and they go, hey, I got this thing. And they're like, oh, you got another crazy idea, you know, and they go, how much is it? You know, <laughs> when do I get my money back? This is a conversation we have. I have with my partners and some of my partners are, are from clients from way long time ago, my clients. They are my friends and partners sometimes. And uh, we do all kinds of stuff together. Five grand here, 20 grand here, you know, double our money. And then we end it and go on to something else because <laughs> it's fun. Hi, John. Yes. I have a question for you. So you created a PMA LLC for me a while ago, and I right. managed to open a bank account with Chase. And I also applied for Don's num uh, Den and Broadstreet number. Um, and when I open the and when you open an account, they ask for social security. And once uh, how it, how the credit. So I want to switch to business credit. So once I build a uh, business credit, they it won't be connected to social security. Correct. That's not really a, an issue. There's no connection there. That's 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 not a thing. <laughs> there is no because connection. I was researching that the topic, and yeah. some banks actually use um, social security as it like. Well, so you are it's a personal guarantee. That's not the the issue is guarantee, not SSN. There is no connection between an EIN and an SSN. The only question is, are you guaranteeing the line of credit for the business? So you you went about it the wrong way, in my opinion. You don't just go get a Duns number. Dun and Bradstreet number. You don't get a Dun and Bradstreet number. First, you set up credit. That's what you do first. You set up credit by creating the the, the profile of your company, and then you list your company on listyourself.net. You list your company for, for, uh, that's available, that's recognized. Then Dun and Bradstreet will see it, and they'll see you as a prospective client, and they'll contact you. It might take a couple of months, right? In the meantime, you want to set up your net 30 accounts with three or four suppliers. This is what you do first before you have credit. You get credit accounts. Like for example, Uline, Uline.com is a great company mm -hmm. that'll, it sells all kinds of stuff. You want to buy stuff, not just to get credit. You want to buy stuff that you're, you can use or buy it for somebody else who can use it. It's like printer paper, right? Or toner cartridges mm -hmm. or something like that, supplies. <clears throat> so you get these net 30 accounts where you're not the guarantor on them. You got to be careful though, because the applications, sometimes they'll they'll ask, they'll ask you to sign a guarantee. Don't do that. You might be, 
don't ever give your SSN out on an application like that. When you're trying to get your business credit, you want a net 30 account where there's no personal guarantee. So once you do all those, you're going to have credit worthiness. And then by that time, within two months, Dun & Bradstreet will contact you by letter uh, and, and ask you, hey, would you like to subscribe to our services? And they have all these services for credit, which are really good services. They're not necessary. You don't need any of them. Um, I always tell them that you'll get back with them. I always say, I'll get back with you. I got to talk to my partner about this, okay? But anyways, uh, mm -hmm. you get your net 30 accounts after you go through listyourself.net. And I have a whole course on this, guys. It's on the business and entrepreneurship, the same course I've been telling you about, Ace of Co aceofcoins.club. Okay, there's a video subscription that talks about this. So once you get your net 30 accounts and it, it starts rolling and you then you there's a certain way I have you pay the bill, okay? So you pay the bill and then you do that a couple of times, a couple of cycles. And then when you get into the 90-day period, Dun & Bradstreet will contact you with a credit score and that's when you have the ability to go to a bank and ask for an unsecured line of credit. So you're going to get an unsecured line of credit, not a credit card. Never, never, never accept the bank's offer to give you business credit. That means you're not getting business credit. You're not getting business credit because credit is underwritten by risk factors. And when the bank offers you business credit just because you opened an LLC account, they're underwriting it using your social security number and your personal credit. They're lying to you. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you have to go out and look for the credit. If someone's coming to you and offering you credit, don't do it because typically they're going to underwrite it with something that they can bank on and they can bank on your personal credit. Don't do it. You go off and deliberately go out of your way to find net 30 accounts, net 30. That means they don't bill you for 30 days. That's mm -hmm. how you get business credit. And you're not going to have that question then. Don't be the guarantor. If you see that provision anywhere, don't do it. The only exception is your merchant account. And that's not a problem. So be the guarantor on your merchant account, like with Stripe mm -hmm. or PayPal, no problem. But don't be the guarantor on your net 30 accounts. This is going to allow you to separate your credit so that your business stands alone on its credit worthiness. And this mm -hmm. is starting off with a zero balance sheet. I mean, most of us are starting out with nothing, right? Imagine if you had already figured out how to buy an, an online business and you're making, let's say, $2,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you had a balance sheet for that $2,000 a month, because on that balance sheet, you're going to show your inventory and everything else. And then you go to a lender. Now the lender is going to see you've got something going on there. It can be underwritten under your business without a guarantee, but just the same, you can start with no, uh, no balance sheet and still not be the personal guarantor. You just have to shop around. So right? you said don't get a business credit, but get, uh, but get uh, unsecured uh, line of credit, right? No. No, no. You want business credit in the name of the business by starting out with net 30 accounts. You're not going to get the net 30 accounts very easily until you list your business on listyourself.net. You do that first, then you get your mm -hmm. net 30 accounts. Don't get less than three. Don't get more than four net 30 accounts. I'm going to suggest yeah. Uline. Uline. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Don't be a personal guarantor on any mm -hmm. of these net 30 accounts because you will find many net 30s. You might find a Home Depot, right? The, the, if you go to Home Depot, like physically the business or the website, most of the time, the first application for credit you're going to see has a personal guarantee on there. So don't do those. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I go to the bank, when I get the money from the bank, I don't get uh, business credit, right? That's what you, what you, you, you said. You are right? building up business credit from what I'm describing. Yeah. You've got to let this season a little bit, which is only a couple of months, two or three months, go through a couple of cycles of paying off your net 30 <clears> accounts. And then you'll have the credit worthiness to go to a bank and ask for an unsecured line of credit. Mm -hmm. And and after, I would say, three to six months, you're going to be looking at a twenty to $60,000 line of credit. And I would just caution you to use that line of credit for the business. Don't buy yourself a new car. You know? Yeah, yeah. Makes and then sense. on the other, buy something, like use that line of credit to actually pay for something that makes money. Don't pay your employees with that line of credit. Don't pay an expense. By mm -hmm. advertising, this is going to generate sales, direct response advertising or something like that. That's when you're just starting out. But yeah, I was looking for, <laughs> yeah, I was looking for a loan to buy more crypto. <laughs> but Don't do uh... that. Don't. Look, guys, come on. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I know what I'm doing. I mean, uh, I know what I'm doing. I'm not. Uh, crypto is a speculation. It's not a business. Crypto is pure speculation. It's not an investment. Cryptographic currency is not an investment. It's not.
You're not investing in cryptos by buying cryptos. <laughs> Understand? I mean, I, I've into. been through cycles, so I know what what uh, what what to buy and what uh, when to sell. Yeah. And, and it's not an investment. Maybe you're yeah. good at speculating, and some are, but it's still speculation. Yeah, I agree. It's speculation, and that's why I'm looking for uh, something else outside of crypto. Always reallocate. I hope you make money in cryptos. It's it's good. I mean, I, I think you should have some, but I'm just saying, realize what it is. It's high risk, and uh, maybe you can lower the risk because you know stuff. But yeah, reallocate, take your profits, be ready to take your profits and reallocate. Yeah, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. On the business side, I'll just make the comment that uh, it's a different world, okay, than in the 90s. In the 90s, a business owner was doing really well if he's uh, keeping, uh, let's say, 10% of his uh, gross income, all right? Uh, may, I wouldn't say a website business. I'm just going to say the standard uh, entrepreneur that's running a, like a UPS store, okay? Today, an online business with low overhead, is it's acceptable, it's realistic to be able to keep 25% of the net income. And it's also realistic to keep 85% of the gross income as the net income. So when you see things like that and, and businesses that are only 18 months old, don't think it's a scam. It could be, it doesn't mean it is though. Those numbers are actually typical for now. They wouldn't be 20 years ago, but they are now. So that's not a gauge. What's a gauge is to make sure that the um, the control of the website is going to be transferred. So make sure you use escrow for that and make sure you're with a professional that can verify that you're going to get the whole website to control of everything. Make sure you're, don't pay for too much inventory. Sometimes people sell a website-based business and they have too much inventory. In my opinion, make sure that the inventory is not factored into the purchase price. They can keep their inventory. Just tell them, I don't want your inventory right? Unless it's a small amount. So there are some things that me that measure whether or not it's a, it's a legitimate deal. Also, you can get a forensic accounting to check and make sure that the purchases were from IP addresses that are unique. So there's a few things to, to be concerned about, you know, when you're, when you're a few ways to check to make sure it's okay. Uh, Zoom, would you want to ask? Yeah. So if I'm, um, I'm just going back to the buying the businesses and stuff and I don't want to run it, right? I want ownership. I yeah. just want to buy multiple right. businesses. Are there specific like resources you might know of that would help in allocating, like getting people to manage the business or what do you think about that? Okay. The best way to do that, I would go through a broker that normally does that thing. The thing you want to do, like find a broker. It? Yeah. Find it. Well, no, hold on a second before we get there. So a broker that normally sells businesses or brokers them where the first thing I would look at as a new person doing it is the people that would be managing it still work there. And when you buy it, the owner is not the guy that runs it like on a day-to-day -day basis. He has your position that you want. You want to just right. own it and not run it. So you want to buy something that's already being managed the way you want it managed. So you want yeah. to keep the people that are reliable. They're going to be there and they're going to be fine with the new owner. <laughs> already have a crew. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, if you're a little, you get more of a stomach for it, Maybe you want to buy something that the owner works at thinking that you're going to be able to, re to replace his position with a new hire while you just retain the ownership and don't show up every day. Huh? That takes, yeah, that takes a bit more of a, a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not, you know, there's a, everybody's different, right? If it's me, I, I don't want to deal with that. I would rather buy something that's already the way I want it. All right. I just want to switch places with the owner. I don't want to show up every day and make sandwiches, you know, right. whatever. So. Okay, so there's not like a, you just want to buy it already made. Yeah, look for what you want. And if you want help with that, uh, I would go to a broker and have him bring you deals. Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, John. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, I'll make another comment here, unless you guys want to ask me some questions. One of the things that I'll give you the, again, an example of um, like a property management organization. Property manager. A property manager is that company that, let's say you buy a duplex, right? And you have it under contract with a property manager and the property manager charges, let's say 10% of what you're charging for rent. That's what you pay the property manager for. And you're also going to pay the property manager for 
on-site services, like maybe he has to come out and unplug the toilet, and you're going to also pay him for reimburse him for uh, costs like parts and things like that, right? Parts and labor. So he, so let's say in the middle of the night, toilet breaks, and the tenant ain't going to call you, right? He's going to call the property manager. That's what I'm talking about. What are you getting with a property manager? If you bought the property manager, if you bought that business, what you're getting is the vetted probably the best suppliers in that town. You're getting the plumbers, the contractors, the electricians, uh, the, the handyman, right? You're getting all those guys that are still on the list of people to call when you need something done. And chances are they've been vetted out and they're still good and reliable. And they're going to give you the best pricing and so forth. They're going to give you warranties and things like that, right? That's what you're getting with a property management firm. You're also getting the customer list. Now, you're getting the supplier list, which is your trade secret, and you're getting the customer list. Now the customer list, the, this is just the gold mine of the property manager business. It's already there, right? You're just stepping into the shoes of the owner. So there's a price. So the customer list is gonna determine pretty much the price that you're gonna pay for that type of operation. So you're getting something that's already working. You're getting all the trade secrets in one, in one turn, right? So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're buying a business, like if it's a service, like a professional service, yeah, okay, maybe you're getting the equipment, but what you're really getting is the customer list. That's the gold mine. And then in a place, in a case like where you're buying a property manager, you're getting the trade secret. The trade secret is something that gives you a competitive advantage over everyone else. So if I'm a new property manager, and I'm new in town, right? And I say, I'm going to be a property manager. And I start putting money into marketing and trying to find real estate investors that I can be their property manager, right? I'm also going to need suppliers. I need my contractors to come out there and do the right thing so I look good, right? I have to reinvent that. That puts me at a disadvantage, right? So when I go through that list and I, I find all these suppliers, that's a trade secret. That's going to give me an advantage over everyone else. So just keep that in mind. All right. It's been 45 minutes. Did I, uh, did I say anything important? I hope it helps you guys get, get you thinking anyways. Um, you know, so many people talk to me about avoiding taxes and sure, that's fine. Let's do that. Uh, other financial risk, let's do that. But what about sitting on $10,000? What about sitting on $5,000 or twenty or $50,000, whatever? Sitting on cash or not coming up with a way to make money that leverages your time. You're wasting your time then. You should be doing that. You guys figured out how to wait in line to ask for permission for things. You figured out how to fill out 1040s. You figured out how to become an employee. You figured out how to keep your job qualify for advancement, stuff like that, right? You figure out all those things to keep you a slave. Nothing wrong with that. It probably works. It did for me. But why not figure out how to make some money that you can scale? A way to make money that you can scale, meaning that you don't need, you don't care about the 168 hours in the week. 168. Think of this. You only get 168 hours in the week. If you're selling your hours that you have to work, you can only sell 168, right? And realistically, maybe half of those. That's working 12 hours a day, seven days a week, right? That's craziness. Maybe it's enough to pay the, uh, pay the bills, right? Think about it. You have time. And if you don't have too much time, Leverage your time in trying to acquire something like this, an asset, something that pays you, right? By using a business broker or making some phone calls, call some people, do it yourself, but call some people. You don't need a lot of time to find another asset to get into, an asset, a website. I call that an asset, okay? Why? Because it's ownership of something that pays you. That's an asset, right? Let's say you want to buy, um, I'll keep on giving examples. Let's say you want to buy a yacht. You think, oh my gosh, $50,000 for a yacht. Well, get somebody else to pay for it. <laughs> I don't want to pay for a yacht, but I'll buy a website for $12,000 that will make the payments on the yacht if I borrowed the money to buy it. Okay, so I'm the debtor, no problem. And my asset over here is paying the pay making the payments on the yacht. So what? My yacht's free, isn't it? I don't have to be rich. I just have to be a little creative, right? Try it. Hey, John. Yep. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. I can't figure out how Please. to raise my hand. 
<laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. Please do. Yes. Um, okay. So I was a little bit late. Sorry about that. I was on another link. There were about seven or eight of us over there trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, so this uh, uh, business that you were talking about earlier, uh, this turnkey business, this is um, it, it's very much like an uh, Amazon affiliate or it is an Amazon affiliate. It is an Amazon affiliate that's uh, taking small money and pooling it with its larger money. OK, so it's it's going to Amazon with the contract. You're just part of the contract. They don't even know you exist. OK, and they're and using your website to do it. OK, so you don't need to have a physical location for inventory. There's none of that. No, no, they handle stuff. all that. It's all drop they, shipped. Yeah, OK, they, they help you set up the website. They run it all. Um, I think maybe you need a merchant account. That's it. Oh, yeah. Easy. And, and then more um, details. I'll have them on the call. Yeah. OK, OK, perfect. Um, and uh, the person who's uh, thinking about doing this, they have to be a little computer savvy, website savvy. I mean, they have to be able to work. Okay, that either, sort of thing. either have that knowledge or have a few hundred dollars to have someone else do that for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm that person. I will got pay it. someone. Yeah, I've got, I got a guy that's, I got lucky and I found a guy that for a few hundred bucks, this guy does miracles. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not to the wheel. Yeah, I got lucky there. So okay, perfect. Yeah. So what you do is just send me a, t a message on Telegram. Will do. Yeah, just at, at JJ Singleton, if you would. And okay, and you'll take Bitcoin as payment. Yeah, uh, I'm not charging anything. Okay. Oh, the other. Oh, got I'm it. just showing you guys how to connect in. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Thank you All so right. much. Sure. All righty. Kat, what do you want to ask? Hey, John. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I only actually have a seller's account on Amazon, but uh, I never used it. I just created it and never done anything okay. with it. But it's in my personal name. Does it have, to, should, it, should it be in an LLC that, that you know, that oh. I would create? Taking things property like that out of your name is is useful because you can manage risk better. Think the reason why I say it that way is because think about what's already in your name, probably your car. What other kinds of li financial liability do you have, right? Why would you put something in your name that's going to be hopefully an asset, and now you're connected into all your other liabilities? So yeah, it makes sense to parcel out the ownership of something. Now it's not a risk right now because it's not making money, but why not just set it just like if you're going to use this service, like I'm suggesting, why not just set up a company, right? And have that company, the contracting party for your Amazon account with these guys. That's what I would do. That, that's your merchant account holder, namely, and it's your domain owner for the domain. Oh, okay. So I would yeah. create um, LLC <clears throat> and, and then create another account with LLC name on it. Yeah, I would just do an, I would set up an LLC for that purpose. You just got an LLC with a bank account, right? And then you're ready to go. And that's the thing. If everybody has an LLC and a bank account, he's ready to get into all kinds of stuff. Who knows what you're going to run into next week? Who knows what kind of deals are coming your way? But you're ready. You can just tell somebody, oh, okay, wire me $5,000. Here's my account. Or I can wire you $5,000. You know, I'm ready. So yeah, set up a company and then get involved with something like that. Okay. And you can help with setting up the company? That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, certainly. Yeah. And I do it with okay. the idea that once I show you how to do it, show you how to use it and so forth, that you'll be able to do it yourself, hopefully, and maybe show other people. I'm not trying to like be the only guy you can go to. Right. So, yeah. Okay. I like the idea of not paying taxes. <laughs> yeah. Some other people that I heard of like that idea too. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay. Batman, I'm not going to give you the name of the company. And by the way, I don't know the name of the company. I don't care. We can cover that though, because I'm going to have these people on the call. I'm not going to waste your time. If you, if you want to get on the call. Okay. Um, <laughs> why are you asking me this? What's your solution for squatters and rentals? Okay. Look, I have a legal strategy for that. And I'm not going to tell you if you want to do a call on that. I mean, maybe you want to make money with it. I think you can. Unfortunately, I think it's a business. I hate to say, you know, let me know. Maybe we can schedule a call on that. Ray and I have discussed this too. Is Moko on too? She's she's in, in on that too. I don't know if she's here. She wants to remain anonymous. But um, but yeah, I mean, I have legal strategies. You guys can get me off in all kinds of directions if you want. But um, I'm not going to sit here and just tell you. <laughs> all right. You want to stream on topics? Yeah, topics that we talked about yesterday. I don't know. Um. But I can't. I mean, yeah. You guys want to talk about something? Let me know. I mean, send me. Um... <laughs> okay, Batman. 
Yeah, man. Do a criminal background check on a corporation. All right. Hey, there's one you might want to check out. The United States. <laughs> I heard they've got a record. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when you send in the order form, okay, look at the email address, A6 of Wands. That's my assistant. So sometimes if you want confirmation, just say, hey, 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 send her an email, one or two emails. Hey, did you get it? Did you get it? She's like me, you know, human being. She'll she'll respond. Annoy her. It's okay. <laughs> all right. But thanks, guys. I appreciate you all uh, joining in and your comments and questions. And I hope this is going to be helpful. I'm looking forward to working with some of you. Um, and uh, if you want to start from scratch, I'm happy to do that too. Just let me know. Uh, shoot me a message or schedule a call with me. And I'd love to uh, coach you from the beginning. It's worth it. It's really worth it. I mean, if you spent the next six months figuring out how to acquire an asset uh, and it's going to cost you $15,000, that's a gold mine. That can be a retirement. I mean, just, just doing that to come up with a $2,000 a month net income is going to give you, first of all, the $2,000 a month, right? It's also going to give you the knowledge of how you got the $2,000 a month. That's priceless. If you had that now, why are you talking to me? Right? All right. Thanks for posting these uh, up here. Yeah, thank you for posting these. And cryptic accounting, and I apologize for any delay. We had to switch over in the management of that whole feature. So I want to make sure that everybody who's sending in inquiries, uh, it wasn't set up exactly the way it's supposed to be. So I'm fixing that right now. So I appreciate your patience. So um, I'm intervening in that. So on cryptic accounting, if there's any delay, it's my fault. <laughs> But that'll be resolved quickly, okay? All right. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, what is it? Today's Thursday, right? The last Thursday of March. What am I going to say now? Enjoy your weekend, right? Because after all, isn't Friday the beginning of the weekend? Tell your boss it is We're the beginning of the Easter. weekend. Yes, happy Easter. Sunday is Easter. Find some Easter eggs. <laughs> Candy. All right. Enjoy, y'all. See you next Take week. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.